the refugee crisis or the root cause of it certainly has been making headlines, hasn't it, in The Guardian? Putin moves yeah. to prop yeah. up Assad. Syria, of course, is why there are so many refugees fleeing that country. It, it, exactly. And, I mean, this is, I think, uh, really big news, what's happened yeah. over the last couple mm. of days. Yeah. And Putin, I think, has basically stolen a march on Obama. I mean, I don't know why people never saw this coming. Isn't that what sort of Obama pays the CIA to, to, to work out? Um, it's quite clear now that Putin is targeting non-ISIS targets, mm -hmm. uh, the so-called moderate rebels, whoever they might be. And this is just a blatant attempt to prop yeah. up the Assad regime. It's not part of a wider it's not coalition. Even blatant, is it? Well, know, it's not. It's not part of a wider coalition to get rid of ISIS, as, as the Russians were trying to point out. And it's very difficult to see where this will end because, I mean, it's one of those sort of tinderbox situations that could lead on to something I much bigger. I and I think like that's what, well. I mean, f say for example, the Americans don't take their planes out of Syrian airspace, and there's some sort of um, yeah. meeting of the of, of planes in, in that airspace. I mean, that's what. That's the how the First World War started just something sort of relatively minor and it just flashed. And now the, the UN has, has been backing off Russia so much over Ukraine, you know, really, really turning a blind eye. We don't want to know. We don't want to know whose planes those are. We don't want to know what's going on. And, you know, so far America has been taking that line, but they can't do that forever. They what can't. worries me is that so many people in this country seem to be quite prepared to believe anything that Vladimir Putin well, this says. Country, or... This country. I mean, when yeah, I do a phone, like. oh, my, my listeners on LBC, <laughs> I tell you, I cannot understand people say, yeah, we absolutely support Putin uh, doing this, mm. but the Americans shouldn't do it. I mean, what they've done is absolutely pathetic. Uh, and, and you think. Are these people for real? Do they, do, are they though. really willing to believe a dictator like Putin over sort of the, the leader of the United States or even the British Prime Minister? Mm. Many people are. But Alistair Campbell, when he was when he was selling his book about winners, he was like, so who owns, you know, before you have a strategy, you have to own the narrative, you have to own the frame. Who owns the frame in this situation? Well, it's Vladimir Putin. Mm. And it's... It really annoyed me at the time, and it still annoys me. It's this kind of slavish respect for people who just get away with bare assertion mm. and don't mm. pay any even lip service to, but you know... You, you mentioned Ukraine a minute ago. Um, a huge number of people in this country, again, give him a free pass oh. over Ukraine. They yeah, say, oh, yeah, no, there aren't yeah. Russian soldiers there, yeah. even though they've got the uniforms on. They've <laughs> just believed Putin when he says, oh, nothing to do with me, guys. And the cynical yeah. looking at the UN General Assembly thing, he went there for the first time in 10 years because he knew he was going to start bombing on Monday morning and he wanted to start saying, yeah, yeah, we're going to go, yeah. go for Islamic State as well, knowing all the while that yeah. actually his intention was to prop up his friend and ally Bashar yeah. al-Assad. In real politics, you can see why he wants to do that because mm. Russia traditionally has viewed Syria as with within its area of influence. They they have um, a, a, a naval base on the Mediterranean, so mm. from that, it's a strategically, it's quite important for Russia. And, and the question is, will it go beyond you know Russian and American involvement? This is sectarian violence well, we're seeing in the region. If you, will, will those who have spheres of influence, Saudi, the Saudis and the Iranians, well, also the Iranians try to get involved? Well, the Iranians are already apparently I'm, with ground the, forces. One yeah. of the papers, I can't remember which, uh, uh, ramping up their ground forces yeah. so I if mean, that's true I mean we have that's, well, that's that's had this, this yeah, has yeah, got yeah, a long yeah. way to go mm, okay no, mm. uh, should we move on to other matters yeah, sure. um, Jeremy Corbyn how many column inches have been written about him since he took over? But anyway, this time it's tuition fees, the next many, battle. Many by me. He, he's, <laughs> he's picking so many battles that he doesn't Who's need to pick. Who's picking the battles? Well, he is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, here he's saying he wants to abolish tuition fees. Mm. Well, um, I never wanted them in the first place, uh, and I'd love them to be abolished, but it's going to cost £10 billion. Pounds. Well, where's that going to come from? He says, oh, he's going to increase uh, uh, corporation tax. Well, that's going to really get economic growth going, and national insurance for anyone earning more than £50,000 a year. Yeah. To be fair to well, him. Well, I mean, no, oh, no, God, go no. on, go on, somebody no, needs to. I, I really think this is absurd. We, for years, for decades, for centuries, we managed to educate our young people without defraying the cost onto them. The real aberration here is that we've suddenly thought it was okay to stiff an entire generation with 50 grand's mm. worth of debt when they leave university. Because the Labour wanted 50%. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and sure. because the Labour wanted 50% of students to go to yeah. university. And, and, and frankly, I don't. I genuinely don't care where they get it. They can get it from corporation tax. They can get it from. Soak the rich. Say, Shake no, that no, no, money no, no. tree again, no, listen, Zoe. Listen, hey? Ian. Shake he, the money tree. We spend tree. a huge That's amount. We spend, a, we spend a huge amount of money giving rich people tax breaks on their pension savings. We could we could actually claw some of that back and spend it on students. It's really about redistributing between one generation and another. And I think the younger generation is being absolutely stiffed, and everybody knows it. So you know. Let him try and do fairly by them and see where it gets 
gets him because I think it will get him quite far. OK. Mm. <laughs> I, I don't know why you're surprised, though, that he's having these battles, because this is the, the difference well, between the politics of principle and the, pro the well, politics he, of practicality. He, he would almost. say it's the new politics. Mm -hmm. I was elected on 60% mm -hmm. of the vote, so the Labour Party had better get used to this. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, he, he's, got yeah, a, yeah. He's, got, <laughs> he's got a right to say that. Mm -hmm. But there's no point in picking battles at this stage that you know you're probably not going to win. He's not going to win the battle yeah, on I... Trident. He's not going to win the battle on this. So why fight it right now within two weeks of him being elected? I, firstly, I think he, he's fighting it right now because it is a point of principle and he's trying to lay down where he is. Secondly, I really genuinely think this is why the Labour Party lost the last election. Is this is the not just because of tuition fees, but because of this one example. Their big idea was to reduce mm. tuition fees. And when you heard them, and said it, it, it doesn't actually make that much difference yeah. whether you're paying 6,000 or 9,000. The principle is that the individual is still being left with a huge amount of yeah. debt. Yeah. Jeremy Corbyn himself, we must move on, we've got lots sorry, back in. Sorry, sorry, Jeremy, sorry. Jeremy Corbyn himself is in Scotland, obviously, because it's there are elections there in yeah, May. Because that's yeah. going to win a lot of votes, isn't it? What, drinking urn brew? Yeah. I mean, the English politician <laughs> goes up to Scotland. What should we do that's typically Scottish? Oh, let's have a can of iron brew. Why didn't he toss a caber at the same time? I don't time? think he wanted to drink it. I think that guy from BuzzFeed made him drink it. That's nobody what I picked makes, up. That's what I picked up from. Something. It's but not like I was on Twitter all day. No, you never are. <laughs> no, no. Shaking your I was getting tree. us to the story that you put <laughs> down the bottom sorry. here, which is that elections in Scotland, as there are, uh, there are. mayoral elections next May Indeed. 2. So mm -hmm. what's the story down well, here? Well, Zach Goldsmith uh, tomorrow morning will presumably be confirmed as the Conservative candidate for London Mayor to right. succeed Boris Johnson to fight Sadiq Khan. Mm -hmm. Now, this is going to be quite an interesting fight because mm. um, a lot of people thought Tessa Jowell would win the Labour nomination. Well, Sadiq Khan, brilliant organisation, brilliant campaign, he fought in many ways. Um, and he mobilised people in a similar way to Jeremy Corbyn, slightly quieter. Mm. Um, but he's got an issue because to win, he's got to win a lot of votes in outer London, in the sort of conservative outer London boroughs. That's going to be quite difficult for him to mm. do. Zach Goldsmith, on the other hand, he's known quite a lot in West, in West London. Nobody knows who he is in East London. Mm. So he's got a bit of an issue too. This is going to be a really interesting fight. I tell who you else what's... could be oh, mayoral candidates? Sorry, oh, Sean so Barry. For, oh, for, for, for the, the Conservatives. Conservatives oh, the, well, the others are complete non-entities. Right. That's, I mean... that's a little unfair. Stephen <laughs> Greenhalgh is deputy mayor at the moment. Said Kamal, MEP, uh, Conservative MEP. Andrew Ball. London and Andrew okay. Boff, who's been in the London Assembly for years. Yeah, yeah, as I say, complete non entities. No, they're not non entities, <laughs> they just possibly haven't. Um, anyway, meaning that people outside more of London it is, than Zach Goldsmith. It is actually, I, I mean, I'm, I, I kind of approve of the Zach Goldsmith thing anyway, because I think he amps up the pressure see, on the and others. That's, and that's why he could <laughs> Yeah, that's win, his problem. Because a lot of people on the left quite like Zach no, Goldsmith. No, 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 I don't like him. I think well, he's a lot of people, I mean, Jenny Jones, the, the Green, yeah, she yeah. said, I mean, she, I think she said she'd actually vote for him, but no, she wouldn't she'll be. Vote a, for Sean she wouldn't be She wouldn't be averse to having him in power as opposed to Boris. He'll be really good for the campaign because he will he will put the pressure on the other candidates, specifically Sadiq, but, to, yeah. to kind of put green mm. issues front but and centre, which are really important. Zach's but, problem is he treats interviews as brainstorming sessions and he comes out with policies just on the hoof. Like he did an interview with me and he said, Oh, let's let's increase the congestion charge so massively. And then did you I'm go thinking, mad? I thought yeah, <laughs> that is an election losing policy. So I suspect that he'll row back. Can on we that. do another story very, very yeah, quickly? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, there's sure. probably come something quite serious. Yeah, How yeah. will Hello there, welcome back to the Press Preview, taking a look through the newspapers, joined tonight by The Guardian columnist Zoe Williams and LBC radio presenter Ian Dale. Let's move to Syria, shall we? The other big story around Syria's perfect firestorm is the way The Independent has described Russia's new involvement in the crisis. I mean, The Independent is not shy away from making it sound like the doomsday scenario. Mm -hmm. And, you know, The Guardian to a degree... The Guardian was kind of a, a little bit more measured. Obviously, Putin is not going for the targets he originally said he was. Obviously, this is going to cause a lot of um, animosity with um, America. But when the Indy says, you know, you've got Iran going in with ground troops and Putin expressly mm. bombing rebel forces who aren't ISIS, then it does make it sound like a conflict is inevitable with a wider international I mean, community. All you need now is Saudi Arabia to make it a perfect storm, really. Absolutely. Um, and I think if that happens, there is a scenario where you think, well, Britain, America, yeah, France, yeah. whoever, and possibly Russia just needs to get out and just leave mm. them to it. But, but then, but, but I, what I think Saudi Arabia's only interest in going in would be if it were part of an international conflict, well, right? I don't know. They, the I mean, the, the thing at the moment is that you, you, you look at all the other Middle Eastern countries and think, well, 
why aren't they doing more to stop this? Now, Jordan, I think, is taking part in areas. You've got all the refugee camps in Lebanon and Jordan. But Saudi Arabia has got sort of two million tents that, pe that they could use for refugees, and they're not using them. Um, I, I, I think it's very difficult for anybody in this country to understand Saudi Arabia's motives in anything at the moment. I mean, they're, yeah. they're, they are, or maybe not their government, but all, a lot of the funding for the sort of extremist mosques in this country yeah. is coming out of Saudi Arabia, and our government seems not to be doing anything about it when Another they could. Another point raised by Jeremy Corbyn, and you're well, going to praise it's... him for that as well. No, right? I, I will yeah. pr pr credit where it's due. But what we should be doing is copying what the Austrians have done and ban any foreign money coming into... I'm going to get the topic here, but yeah, banning any bit. foreign money coming into funding these mosques. Oh, you see, I think that's... I mean, that you know, you could you could say that or not. That's I, up I to you. Did. But um, <laughs> it, it is off topic. There is something going on, isn't there? Saudi Arabia is deliberately keeping the oil price low in order to destabilise yeah. relations already. I don't think if they did get involved, it would be straightforward at all. No, it wouldn't. And I think and the independent, which, which we've now gone from... I can go back to it. I don't think they're overcooking the goose here. No. I think a lot of people mm. genuinely fear that this could get out of control at some mm. point. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. and with Russian planes flying over the same airspace as US planes, it's not difficult to imagine a scenario where mm. things really could go up. And also, it does make it feel really strange that we're having this kind of debate about whether to do airstrikes in Syria, as though it's just kind of one isolated country which we could either bomb or not bomb when actually that would be a hugely combustible event yeah and, and, we, and we've how... got lots to cover okay. we, we, right. right. we, yep. uh, we must crack on the